Good morning. We are so happy you are here today at Living Word Church. Who's ready for some praise and worship this morning? Hallelujah. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. Let's sing that again. You give life. You are love. darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is
We thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Just know he's got every single fear. Be cleansed in the holy reign of Jesus. Right here, right now, no fear. Just
upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth grow strangely We just worship you, Lord. It is good to sit in his presence. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to, to go ahead and take a seat right now. Sandra, if you'll keep playing that. Sometimes we just need to sit and listen with every head bowed and every eye closed. Concentrate on him this morning. 
Many times we're doing all the yammering and we fail to be quiet and listen to his whispers. Listen to that still, small voice. The Bible says that the angels surround God and they're constantly praising him, singing Hosanna in the highest. And they see a new side of God every time. Lord, I thank you that you're not a boring God. There's a new side to you every time. As we worship you as we praise you, as we give you the glory, singing Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I just begin to praise him. Just begin to give him the glory this morning. Thank him. Be careful to thank him. Praise you, Jesus. See, God wants to do something in our hearts today. He wants to change us today. Wherever you're at, in the natural and wherever you're at in the spiritual. He wants to take you to a new level. He says it's time. It's time. Oh, we just worship you this morning, Lord. Worship you this morning. Careful to give you all the praise. Just concentrate on him this morning. Picture him on the throne as you worship. Shake the world off. Get the crust of the world off this morning. Just fix your eyes upon Jesus. Just as we sing, turn your eyes upon him. God's here right now and he wants to do mighty things. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing it together one more time with him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things.
See, as you get closer to Jesus, as you get closer to God, you worship Him and praise Him, the world begins to fall off. The things of the world go strangely dim. As you seek His face, as you hunger and thirst for more of Him, as you give God the glory in everything, giving thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is everybody glad they come to church today? Praise Jesus. I want you to stand today and go greet somebody in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, if you find a seat, we'll go ahead and get started this morning. Love the sound of fellowship. And speaking of fellowship, December 6th, put that on your calendar, we'll be having a, I guess you call it a soup fellowship dinner, bring something to at the Peterson's house in Leonardville. That'll be December 6th on Sunday night at 5 o'clock it will start, and uh, we'll have more details about what to bring and everything, but it'll start at 5 o'clock, and we'll be doing some games and just having a time of fellowship. It's always good to get together and just have some fun, amen? But we do that every Sunday morning in church, don't we? That's right. That's right. And uh, also just want to remind everybody, because of Thanksgiving this Thursday, we will not be having Wednesday night uh, prayer at 7 p.m. So that is canceled, for, and then we'll start back up the Wednesday after that. Are you ready to receive your tithes and offerings today? Amen. Hallelujah. I got a treat for you. I'm going to have Zach come up and pray over the offering today. Our wildland firefighter is coming up. <laughs> start playing. Lord, uh, I'm going to share a little bit something about what God has helped me with through tithing. Um, in the past, I've always liked tithe, but I mean, every once in a while I'd miss it and not really think it was that big of a deal. And at the end of the year, I'd always be trying to like catch up on the tithe and stuff like that. But uh, this year is a little bit different. I, I decided to be more diligent in tithing, and so. I don't think I, I think I'm all caught up on my tithe. I don't think I really have to write a check at the end of the year this year. But um, through that, uh, the Lord has blessed me in my job. The way it works is I'm a seasonal wildland firefighter, and so I have so many hours and so much funding every year. And so usually by the end of October or so, like we get laid off and we have to find another job for the rest of six months, which. I mean, sometimes you can find a job, sometimes I can just do what everybody else does and be a bum and go ski or something like that. But this year, um, the whole year I was told that we, like I, I got the extended hours because of the coronavirus and stuff, and then we didn't have enough funding, and so I was like, okay, I'll get laid off in October, and then all of a sudden, and at the end of October, they're like, oh, we, we, can, we can work you through November. I was like, okay, cool, that's, that's good, we found some funding. And then at the end of, or just last week, they told me, oh, we can probably work you the entire year. And so now I don't actually have to find another job, and I'm able to use those hours that I have. And they found, I don't know where they found the funding for me. It's crazy. They're like, you know, I don't know. I don't get it. But anyway, so now I'm able to work the entire year, which helps me out not only like financially and not having to find another job, but also like the stress of finding another job sometimes sucks. Um, so if you want to bow your heads, I'll pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, I just lift up this offering to you, Lord, and uh, I ask that you bless the people and uh, the offering, Father God, and as we sow back into your kingdom, Lord Jesus, and that uh, we know that you can do a lot more with 10% than we can do with 100%, Father God. And so, Lord, I just lift it up to you, and I pray that you bless these people and the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and bring the ties up and put them in the baskets up here. Hallelujah. Just one more announcement. Uh, just um, if you haven't brought in your Christmas boxes yet for the, for the Operation Christmas Child, and um, I think people have been setting them out here on the table, but uh, you got till uh, I believe we're going to deliver them around 9, 930 tomorrow morning to the drop-off place. So you got till then uh, to bring them in if, uh, if you haven't done that yet. And if you uh, need a little extra time, just call us here at the church and we'll, we'll make sure we get it, 
get it picked up, but tomorrow is the last drop drop off. So uh, we appreciate everybody. Appreciate you bringing in the boxes and hope you had a good time finding everything, the, finding stuff. I, I know a lot of people have a good time uh, finding stuff to put in the boxes. Amen? Amen. Amen. So are you ready for the word today? Oh, it's going to be a good one, right? Amen. The Lord's always got a good word. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for this word. We thank you, Father, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Sword, Father, and we just thank you, Father, hallelujah, that we're changed uh, when we walk out of here today. We'll be, we'll be different. I will be different, Lord, as I walk out of here today, Father, as I have ears to, that are open and my heart is open, my mind is, is, is open, and we just are careful to always give you the glory and always give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Title of my message today is, How Can You Give Thanks? And you'll understand that as... as as we go further into the message, but how can you give thanks? First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18 says, in everything, in everything, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. First of all, first of all, there's a command to give thanks. He says, in everything give thanks. This is a divine expectation from the Lord. The psalmist says in Psalm 92, 1, it is good to give thanks to God. And the Bible makes it clear that of all people, Christians, that's me and you, ought to be thankful. Amen? Amen. We ought to be thankful. Let's look at Psalms Chapter 103, verse 1 through 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities, he heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Wow, we need to give thanks to God. Just reading that alone should get us excited. Reading that alone should, oh my goodness. And if we haven't been giving thanks, we need just reading that ought to just get your feet a dancing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Let's, let's go on to Romans chapter 1, verse 21, as we set this up. Romans 1, 21. For even though they knew God... They did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They weren't thankful. They were not grateful. They did not give recognition to God, and they acted as though they were they were their own source and they were their, they were their own sufficiency. And I'm here to tell you today that the most taken for granted person in the universe is God. We don't like to say that, but he is. Because there is absolutely nothing you do that does not depend on God. God is the source of all, uh, all good things and he, and he doesn't want you to forget it. He doesn't want me to forget it. In the Bible, it talks about, you know, the story of the 10 lepers, and you can find that in Luke chapter 17. All of them came to God and, and, and said, heal us, Lord. And God said, go show yourself to the priest. 
Go show yourself to the priest. And as they walked to the priest, they were healed. And one of the lepers, who, by the way, was a Samaritan, a foreigner, someone you wouldn't expect, stopped when he saw his skin was becoming smooth like that of a child. And he turned around and he came back to Jesus and he fell on his face and he glorified God with a loud voice and he didn't care who was listening. We need to not care who's listening. We need to praise God and not care who's listening. He bowed before Jesus, glorifying God, and he said, thank you, thank you. Jesus asked him a question. And he said, I thought there were 10 of you. 10 of you. Where are the other nine at? Where's the other? I tell, let me tell you where the other nine were. They were enjoying their blessing. They were enjoying their blessing. See, it says that they all were healed. And the other nine were so excited about the blessing. Guess what? They forgot about the blesser. We need to not forget about the blesser. Anybody guilty of that? I think all of our hands could go up just a little bit, maybe. Hmm? They have forgotten the blesser. They've forgotten the best blesser. Israel, the people of Israel were in the wilderness, and they were seeing cornflakes come down from heaven, man. Manna was coming down. It was coming down every day. And they had enough for that day. And on the weekend, they had enough uh, that for two days so that they, we, they would be able to gather so they wouldn't have to gather on the, on the day of Sabbath. And guess what they did? They said, we're tired of this. We're tired of this manna. I want some, I want some KFC, man. I want some fried chicken. Well, actually, they got quail, but it's the same principle. They said, Lord, we're tired of this. And I'm thinking, now, at least you're eating. At least you're eating. At least you're having something to eat. But guess what? They were watching a miracle, but they skipped the miracle. Can you see that? They were watching a miracle, but they skipped the miracle because they wasn't getting what they want. They were complaining. We want quail. We want KFC. We want quail. So God sent them quail. And he sent them more quail and more quail and more quail. So much quail that it began to, to stink. It was rotting. There was so much quail. And then they started to loathe quail. And they were watching a miracle and complaining that it was not now a filet mignon. Come on. So instead of being grateful, they grumbled. So first of all, we have this divine expectation, a command, if you will, to give thanks. We need to give thanks. Now I want to talk about the context of thanksgiving the Bible says, he says, in everything, now, now this is what we don't want to misread. He says, in everything, give thanks. He does not say give thanks for everything, okay? He says, give thanks in everything. That's a huge, big difference there. If you're sick, he's not saying, oh, he's not saying, oh, God, thank you for making me sick. No, you're not thankful to be sick. And if you're broke, he's not saying, give God thanks because I'm broke. No, I'm not thankful to be broke either. If your house burns down, God is not saying give thanks because your house burnt down. That would be giving thanks for everything. Are you with me so far? He says give thanks in everything. So to put it another way, when things go wrong, give thanks not for the thing that went wrong, okay, 
But in the midst of the thing that is going wrong, find a reason to give thanks. Come on. In the midst of everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Let's read that. Though the fig tree should not blossom and there be no fruit on the vines. In other words, the produce is not coming up like I wanted it to. This job is not profitable. My profit margin is not like I thought it should be. Though the yield of the olive should fail. So we got to remember that the olive was used for everything in Israel. And the fields produced. The fields produced no food. They produced no profit. Basically, basically saying, I'm poor. The bank's for closing. Things are bad. And as we keep reading here, through the flock, though the flock should be cut off from the fold and there be no cattle in the stalls, in other words, no money in the bank, the stock market's going down, in other words, it's a bad year, but then we come to verse 18. Yet I will exult in the Lord. That's giving thanks in everything. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Verse 19 says, The Lord God is my strength, and he has made my feet like hinds feet and makes me walk on high places. So even though I cannot praise God for my circumstances, circumstances, I'm going to praise God. Now watch this. I'm going to praise God that he is with me in my circumstances. Come on. Hallelujah. Though I cannot praise him for my situation, I'm going to praise him that I'm not in this situation by myself. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. There's teachers and there's preachers. Teachers tell it, but preachers yell it. So if I'm hurting your ears, I'm sorry. Even though there are Storms raging all around me, I'm going to thank God I'm not in the boat alone. Hallelujah. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to thank him. Even when I don't see him fixing my stuff, I'm still going to thank him. Hallelujah. Even though I don't, even though I don't see my situation changing at that moment, I'm still going to thank him. And I'm going to thank him that he's given me hinds feet. To keep on running, to keep on winning, even when, and when, when I'm too tired to run. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, I'm going to give thanks. I'm going to give thanks. You know, somebody, somebody ought to hear Job. We all know the story of Job. Job finds everything collapsing around him. And his wife says, do what normal people do, husband Job. Cuss God out. Man, I'm glad I don't have a wife that tells me that kind of stuff. I would be shocked if she did, and I know she never would. But she said, do some cussing, Job. If there ever was a time that you could cuss God out, this is the time that you should do it. Go off on God. You know it's a good time to do that. You know what Joe said? He said, he said, you talk like a foolish woman. Even if I said that to my wife, I would never say that to my wife either. <laughs> and, then he, and, then, and then Job raises the question, and I'm paraphrasing this. Do we only measure our relationship with God only by the stuff that he gives us? Job says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And what does he do? He gets his praise on. He gets his praise on in the middle of a collapsed life. And I'm telling you something, you don't get any lower than Job. Read about it. If you've never read the story, read about what happened to Job. 
his children, his job, his workers, uh, his income, his health went to pot, his wife. I mean, everything has gone haywire in his life. But Job says, I am going to wait for my change to come. I'm going to bless the name of the Lord. Is anybody getting this today? Thanking God in the middle of it. Not for it. And then you rise to a higher level. Paul and Silas were put in jail. When you read Acts 16, and they were put in jail unjustly. And it, and it says, the Bible says, at the midnight hour, the jail keepers could overhear the singing and praising God. How are you going to praise God in jail when you're innocent? But they gave thanks in the midst of of their situation. Jehoshaphat was invaded by the enemy and the Bible says he was in terror, but he fell to his knees and he gave thanks. So we are to give thanks in every circumstance. There is always a reason to give thanks. It, it's just that we're not used to we're so used to not doing it, to not giving thanks, especially when things are going wrong. And in many cases, and many times, we are often not used to giving thanks, giving thanks when things are going right. Come on. I'm the only one raising my hand today. So you know we weren't, well, we're not even used to giving thanks when things are going right. So you know we're not used to it, giving thanks when things are going wrong. Why should I give thanks? Why should I give thanks? What is the benefit of me giving thanks? How, how am I better off for giving thanks? But he tells you, and we read, we, as we read the, the scripture before, he tells you, he says, this is the will of God concerning you. Now watch this. This is, this is good stuff. When I give thanks, when you give thanks, you're in the will of God. Come on. You're in the will of God. Giving thanks in everything. For this is God's will concerning you in Christ Jesus. When you are grumbling, when, I, when you are grumbling, you are outside of God's will. And I just wonder how many of us are living outside of God's will because, uh, you know, hmm, I wonder how many professional grumblers we have here today. Don't, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. And grumbling is your occupation and, and you just don't get paid for it. Now, I'm not saying that there are not periods of time when you grumble. Me, personally, I've never grumbled. I'll have to repent for lying there. His point is, is, is to give thanks. And when we give thanks, we position ourselves smack dab in the middle of God's will. That's, that's good news. That's simple good news, just giving thanks. Now, why, uh, why is that critical? Well, let's, let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let's read it first here. It says, and we know, everybody say, and we know, that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And we know, them three words, and we know, that's so critical. You see, the only folks that are going to give thanks are the folks who know something. 
the folks who grumble all the time don't know something. Something has escaped their notice. Come on. But the folks who know what this verse is talking about, even in the midst of calamity, even in the midst of confusion, even in the midst of distraction and and destruction, even in the midst of God not answering their prayers, guess what? They still know something. You still know something. And we know that all things, everybody say all things, all things. Now the reason, the reason why in the midst we give thanks is because we know something, right? All things are working together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purposes. In other words, God is working something out, okay? He's tweaking, he's twisting, he's turning, and he's making something happen. He's making something happen in your life. Now, I know, I, know what you're, I know what some of you might be saying right now. I can't see it. I can't see it. Well, we're talking about what you know, not what you see. I'll say that again. We're talking about what you know, not what you see. He says, we know that all things are working together for good. Hallelujah. Now, uh, how could Moses, Moses' mother, ever thought that by putting her baby in a wicker basket and putting, putting that basket in the Nile River and hearing him cry a little bit as he floats down the Nile River and at that very exact time that Pharaoh's daughter would be taking a bath in the river and then, and then Miriam uh, Miriam, Moses' uh, sister, would go to Pharaoh's daughter and not only help her with the child, but also offer uh, Moses, to Pharaoh's daughter, Moses' mother, to be his nanny. So Moses' mother got to raise her own son and get paid for it when she was only trying to save his life. And our God would raise up Moses in Egypt to that, so that he would have the understanding of Egyptian thinking. Because 80 years later, uh, God would bring him back. He's going to send him back to the old place that, he thought, that thought Moses thought he would never go back to again. But guess what? God had a bigger plan that, he couldn't, that Moses couldn't see. He couldn't see. He couldn't make sense of it. If you, ask, if you ask Joseph, if you ask Joseph, how can, how can you give thanks, Joseph? How can you give thanks when your brother sold you into slavery? When you were illegitimately accused and thrown in prison for years and forgotten about. Just forgotten about. How can you give thanks, Joseph? And I'm guessing if Joseph were here today, he would tell you God was doing something. And he would say, I didn't know it back then, but I was sold into slavery so that I could wind up in a prison, so that I could go to Egypt, so that when the famine came and I would be second in command, come on, and I would give the orders to feed my people. God was working something out for good. And that's why Joseph can say, I could give thanks. If you ask Esther why God made her so pretty, the Bible said she was pretty. She was a pretty girl, and the king would go, whoa. She was pretty, and he chose her to be his wife. But little did she know she wasn't made pretty just to win a beauty contest. She was made pretty to be chosen his wife so that when, when, they were, when the king was getting ready to kill all the Jews, she could walk in and she could look into her husband's eyes and to the king's eyes and say, darling, we got to have a conversation tonight. And when he saw his wife and he changed his mind about the Jews, see, God is always working something. He's always doing something. Hallelujah. So if I were you, and and, and if I were me, I would find a reason to give thanks. 
Hallelujah. I would find a reason to give thanks. Glory be to Jesus. Because he's doing something. He's doing something when we give thanks. It's a command to give thanks. And then we have, and then we have Jesus Christ. Five thousand men, five thousand men, not counting women and children, and everybody there is hangry, hungry. And the only thing that there is there is some boy has a couple of sardines and a few crackers, basically, two fish and five barley loaves. And they question Jesus. What is this little boy's lunch among so many? But Jesus said, bring me the fish, bring me the bread. And the Bible said, now watch this, the Bible said, he gave thanks. How are you going to give thanks over two fish and five barley loaves. Jesus understood something. You give thanks for what you have. Even though you don't have what you need, even though you don't have what you want, you give thanks for what you have. Is anybody hearing this today? And you know the story there was enough food. It was a miracle. There was enough food to feed everybody. And I think like 12 baskets were left over of food. Leftovers. God invaded to feed them. He invaded to feed. He invaded to teach his disciples then and to teach his disciples now. That's you and me. That if this is a lesson. This is a lesson you give thanks for what you have. And you will be able to see God take a little and do a lot. Now, I'm getting close to the end here. So I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some food a little bit since we're getting close to lunch. Now, I like cake. I don't have it very often anymore because I like it too much. I used to get me a big piece of cake at 9 o'clock at night and a big glass of milk. Oh, boy, that was the best. But I can't do that anymore. When I see cake made and I see the flour put in, notice I say I see because I don't make cake. But I see the flour put in, I see the butter put in, maybe uh, sugar put in, there's other ingredients, nutmeg, whatever it is. Now, I have never asked to eat a stick of butter. (laughs) I have never asked to eat the amount of sugar that goes in for a cake or, or any other ingredient because eating those ingredients by themselves has no appeal to me. And if I were invited to the table and somebody said, come, let's have a stick of butter, I wouldn't be interested. Now, there might be a few of you here that would be. I have no idea. I'm staring at Pastor Keith right now. I think I even remember you telling me you've eaten a stick of butter before. I don't know. No? Not in those glory child days you didn't eat a stick of butter? I wouldn't be interested in eating a bowl of sugar or a bowl of flour. I'm not interested. That has no appeal to me by itself. But then they get all mixed together. All those individual ingredients, they're intermingled one with the other. They're turned upside down, inside out. They're joined together. And then they're put in an oven, a hot fire. Now, I'm still not impressed With all the mixing together, that still doesn't impress me. Even when it goes into the hot fire, I'm not impressed. But just give me a little time. 
If you give me a little time, it doesn't matter where I'm located in the house, the smell of what is happening in the oven, come on, is going to get my attention. I got to drink water here. <clears throat> the smell is going to get my attention. And I'm going to realize that those individual, indiv now here, here's the key. I'm going to realize that those individual ingredients had a bigger purpose. Come on. They were not meant for me to understand each one of them individually. Are you with me so far? But how they interrelate collectively and when they do that and they get all fired up, all of a sudden, I'm going to be levitated from where I am. I'm going to have a good time eating me some cake. Because all those individual ingredients cooked up something that was worth tasting. So I'm here to tell you today, to say to you today, you may be having a stick of butter situation in your life right now. You may be having a bowl of sugar situation. You may be having a bowl of flour situation in your life right now. But I want to encourage you today that God in his own time is going to cosmically blend his divine purpose for you. Come on. And you're going to find out all those things were stirred together for something that was greater in your life. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Can I have the team come back up real quick? And I will finish. Watch, stand with me, please. Hallelujah. If you'll start playing that song, Sandra. So God is asking you in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, in everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus he is asking you right now, can you smell what I'm cooking? You might be in a butter situation, a flour situation, whatever, but it's been mixed together and he's saying for your life, can you smell what I'm cooking? Don't get discouraged if you're going through that situation because God's working it out for good and you just give thanks. You give thanks to the one that deserves the thanks. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's, this is, now hear it, this is God's will in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks. He's cooking up something in your life, folks. He's putting together something in your life. I don't care where you're at spiritually. I don't care where you're at uh, in, in age whether you're five or you're 95, God's not done with you yet. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't you get discouraged because you got something, because you got a butter situation going on in your life. You just continue to give thanks to him. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't get, somebody ought to say, thank you, God. Somebody here, come on. You ought to give God the glory this morning. Somebody ought to give God the praise this morning that he only deserves. Hallelujah. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Holy One. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Sing it this morning. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart.
Father, we praise you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're going to do. We lift you up, Lord. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That you are with us in our situation and that you're bringing us through that situation and you're bringing everything where everything is working out for good and we just are careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord one more shout this morning. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. You know, I got to thinking about uh, Thanksgiving, and I, th I think it's New York that they're only, I don't know, maybe it's, I have no idea what states are doing it. You're only allowed 10 people for Thanksgiving. I say that. But I'm telling you, you know, I got thinking about that. Jesus couldn't have his last supper in New York. There's more than 10. 12 disciples and Jesus. I'm like, how ridiculous. How ridiculous is going on here? And I was uh, reading an article, I think it was a Kansas article about how, and the person that wrote, that they were interviewing was saying that they were talking about wearing masks, and I, I'm fine with wearing masks, whatever, but they were saying how Jesus would wear, if he was here today, Jesus would wear a mask. And I'm thinking, the guy who hung with the lepers mask I'm thinking dust off your Bible and read it we need to not be persuaded amen or be in, for fe in fear now there are all our laws that we have to go by and everything but God's a big God God has not fallen off the throne. And he's working things out. for I, The United States is in a butter situation right now. But he's mixing up the flour. God's mixing, mixing up the sugar, the butter, the nutmeg. And it's going to come out of the oven. And it's going to be good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that it's changed our lives. We're walking out of here different today. I'm walking out of here different today because of what you wanted to be said today, Lord. We thank you for your anointing and your presence. And, Lord, we just lift up everyone here, the sound of my voice, Father, and and we just thank, we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them right now. We pray for protection. We thank you, Father, we, that the angels are with them. That they're, they're, as, as they drive home, you got angels surrounding their car from side to side, bumper to bumper. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, for divine protection. And well, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for wonderful fellowship this Thursday as we celebrate and as we give thanks. And Lord, we just thank you right now for open doors, opportunities to share your gospel, your word, your truth in Jesus' name to those around us. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you give us boldness, that you give us confidence, and that we won't be afraid to share your word, and we won't be in fear. And we are careful to give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, Wednesday night is canceled. Everyone have a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving. You are dismissed.